Okay, so Franklin has now come out with the A-Gate 1.3. At the time of this video, we're kind of working through both the A-Gate 1.2s and the A-Gate 1.3s throughout the country. So we're gonna leave both videos up. At some point, we're gonna retire the original video, so some of this might be repetitive. Okay, so the big difference between the AK 1.2 and 1.3 is the 1.2 has that energy meter down in the bottom right hand side and the A gate and the one the, the 1.3 A gate has the energy meter up top with the uh, battery management system. So again, with using the Franklin system, if you just have one PV system connected to the PV port in the A gate and you're using the A gate as it's designed, upstream of all home loads you don't have to install a single ct and that is the beauty of the franklin system if you put the a gate line side of all home loads no ct is necessary for 95 percent of systems out there now let's go to a situation where the a gate is not installed upstream of all home loads as it's designed a lot of people might use this configuration in California or areas where there's combo meters and they don't feel like relocating down loads downstream. Um, so in this case, right, we're going to have to install a separate set of CTs on the line side of all home loads. So again, we'll install the CTs up here, measuring everything coming in and out of the grid. Um, those are going to land in the CT3 for the L2 phase of the consumption CT and the CT4 port for the L1 phase of the consumption CTs. Now the CTs are going to face the loads. The arrows on the CTs face the loads away from the grid. Again, white is positive, black is negative for those CT wires. Switching the CT wires is the same as pointing the CTs in the wrong direction, that is reversed polarity. So again, if we install in this configuration where we've used that CT3 and 4 port, we've installed consumption CTs upstream of all home loads, then we need to go into the built-in energy meter uh, for the built-in consumption CTs, and we need to unterminate those CT wires out of that port. We need to wrap them in at least three layers of tape uh, so that they don't touch any current carrying conductors or cause any faults. There are... There is amperage that come out of those CTs as full energy flows through them. So it's very important you tape them off, abandon them, and that way we're only pulling power from the consumption CTs that we have installed. If you leave both CTs installed and terminate, that's going to double any readings of this non-backed up loads because it's going to flow through the uh, separate set of CTs and then also through the built-in CTs in the A gate and that is going to screw up the readings. Now let's pretend that we have a split service. You usually see this with 400 amp services, uh, but it can also happen with 200s as well. So in this case, right, we're going to use both sets of CTs. We're going to have the built-in factory CTs monitoring all power coming in and out of this service. We're going to install an external set of CTs over here on this non-backed up panel on the split service to measure anything coming in and out of the non-backed up panel. Now the reason why that is important is because again we want to measure all home loads on site and that way when the utility grid is operating and the batteries are set to maximize self-consumption or to offset time of use rates, we're measuring all home loads and, and during those time of use rates or during the periods where we're trying to utilize the batteries, anytime the CTs sense any power coming into the home, the batteries are gonna discharge to meet those loads regardless of if they're in the non-backup panel or the backup panel. So it, it, monitoring all home loads on site is just extremely critical for the system to actually perform as expected based on the proposal that we have given the homeowner, right? It is using those batteries to offset the entire utility bill, not just the small portion that happened to be in the backup panel. Anytime you install an external set of CTs in the app, it is very important that you're going to toggle on the little question that says, is utility grid split CT installed? So again, if you've installed consumption CTs in that CT three and four port, you toggle on is utility grid split CT installed? 
It's very important. All right, and so now we need to think of other PV systems. So uh, A gates, luckily with the A Power 2 coming out soon, we get a larger PV to storage ratio, but uh, there are certain situations where you have multiple different uh, PV systems or split systems. So um, that could be due to a few different factors. Uh, maybe there's too much PV and too little battery, so we cannot maintain the proper PV to storage ratio. So in that case, we might have one smaller system feeding the PV input in the A gate. Again, that system will get monitored through the built-in PV CTs in the A gate, but then maybe we're gonna land a second system in the backup panel. So if that second PV system's landed in the backup panel, uh, we're gonna use a Franklin AP box. So the, the reason for that is, is when the power goes out and the A gate disconnects from the grid, we need to manage that PV system. So if at any time the home and batteries are, are using less than what the PV system is making, we need to manage that PV. Again, so say, say the PV is producing 10,000 watts, um, the home's only using 1,000 watts, and the battery can only take 5,000 watts. Well, there's nowhere else for that PV to go. It's gonna cause the system to malfunction and shut down. So what the AP box does is it sheds that PV. It's kind of like flipping a switch and it's managing that extra PV during the outage just to make sure that the system works seamlessly. So when you use that AP box, you have built-in PV CTs, so you do not need to install any other CTs. I would, uh, I would just always shoot for using that AP box anytime you're utilizing PV that is not installed in the PV port in the A-gate, because then you do not have to install PV CTs. Next configuration is if we've got a PV system in, landed in the non-backed up panel. Now all of a sudden we don't need to use that AP box because when the power goes out, this panel is disconnected and the PV just shuts down. So we do not have to manage it. It just naturally manages itself. When the power goes out, that second system just shuts down with the grid. Um, but what we do need is we need to install another PV CT. So when we do that, this is a load side non-backup. We're gonna use that CT2 port in the energy meter in the A gate, and we're gonna land it on the L2 phase of the PV system. All right, so now let's pretend that PV system is landed upstream of the A gate. Line side tap tier. So now what we need to do is we need to install that PVCT in the CT1 port. And also we need to land it on the L2 phase of the PV system. Again, that is for a line side non-backup system. Even if we get these CTs installed correctly, we also need to program the app correctly or the system is going to fail to function. So when you're utilizing that CT1 port for line side non-backup system, we need to go in the app where it says secondary solar meter CT and we need to toggle that on because we're using the secondary solar meter CT to measure the CT1 port for a line side non-backup system. If we're utilizing that CT2 port, that is for a load side non-backup system. We need to go into that app and we need to toggle on the feature that says is a gate solar split CT installed. Okay, if you ever need to go back out on site um, to, to regain access to the a gate for power systems, when we gain access to the site, we basically take that monitoring system out of your portal and we put it into our portal and you no longer have access. So what you need to do in that case is when you get back out on site, you just log in directly to the A gate. I think you use like the last uh, 12 digits of the serial number as the password and that will immediately log you in. It's gonna take that system out of our portal. It's gonna put it into your portal. That way you can do whatever you need to do. And then just when you're done, notify the QAQC team and we'll go ahead and reach out to Franklin and have them take that system back and put it into our portal. That is a common theme that we see whenever installers have to return to the site 
on Franklin Whole Home Systems. So that pretty much covers it with Franklin. Franklin is a really easy system to install. We don't see a lot of issues. Um, really all the issues lie when the A gate is not installed as intended on the line side of all home loads, which requires you to install those other CTs. Or if again, we have additional PV for whatever reason that needs to be monitored. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time.